science is clear on climate change. I think what we have noticed in the last five years is an increase in extremes. The weather patterns are changing. The lived experience is also clear. I think from the Canadian fires to the floods in Pakistan, to the floods in Italy, and the droughts, uh, longest period of droughts in Africa, we know that uh, our climate is changing. We're not on track, so I think we need to really, really scale it up and we need to speed it up. But I also think we need to be optimistic because there's no alternative. It's not up to one government to be able to do it alone, not up to the private sector to be able to do it alone, not up to uh, multilateral development banks or international financial institutions to do it alone, or even citizens to do it alone. We need all hands on deck. The target for all of us is to be uh, more efficient, more sustainable, and more safe in terms of energy. And that's where we're heading, to, and that's the future. gas emissions are fueling temperature increases, and there is an urgent need for a global transformation to achieve net zero by the middle of this century. Investment to get there is needed most in developing countries. They need $2.4 trillion every year by 2030, a level of financing which can only be raised by governments, the private sector, development banks, and others all working together. I think the first thing is just realizing that time is against us. The climate is continuously changing. It's not waiting for us to raise the resources. We have the resources. We need to use them more efficiently. And I think we need to call out, uh, you know, climate change is also global public good. We need a lot more public sector financing. This is where we need a lot of additional resources because the loss and damage hits mostly the low-income developing countries because they have not yet built the infrastructure that will be more climate resilient. This is where multilateral development banks, like the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, can really help. I think the way we work is a good blueprint. So our funding model is about one quarter public sector, three quarters private sector. And that means that we can really bring in the private sector. For every dollar that we've been funding over the last few years, we have brought in approximately $2 of private sector money. So I think that's a great way of scaling it up. Success depends on a joining of forces, together with high-level political commitment. At COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt and its international partners launched the energy pillar of its national green transition platform, known as the Nexus for Water, Food and Energy, or NUEFI. This country-led initiative aims to decommission five gigawatts of inefficient fossil fuel capacity by 2026 and develop 10 gigawatts of private renewable energy by 2028, bringing clean energy to millions of Egyptians. At its core, partnerships between local energy companies, domestic and international lenders and investors, project sponsors, international development partners, multilateral development banks, and most importantly, key national decision makers. The Nexus of Water, Food and Energy, uh, the NUEFI platform, uh, is uh, derived from the word NUEFI, which means fulfilling pledges. It is uh, based on Egypt's uh, national priorities within its 2050 climate country strategy. So the NUEFI platform, if I'm describing it in one word, uh, it's a very practical country example uh, to be able to uh, foster collaboration between development partners to push country-led climate goals. The EBRD collaborated with Egypt over several years, fostering the right conditions to attract private sector investment into renewable energy at scale. At EBRD, we can help to narrow the funding gap in three ways, I think. First, 
We work with regulators to help them set the policy environment right for enabling climate-friendly investments. Second, we work with funds, for example, the climate funds, to bring in concessional finance to make climate-friendly projects happen. And then third, we obviously, as an investor, we also do key investments ourselves. And whenever we do so, we bring in others with us. We bring co-investors in to have higher leverage in those climate-friendly investments. As the confidence of investors grew, so did the size of the projects, like the 500 megawatt Gulf of Suez wind farm, jointly funded with the Green Climate Fund, the Japan Bank for International Cooperation and private commercial banks, and built, owned and operated by a consortium of companies. It will be the largest wind farm in Africa. We at Orascom Construction are extremely proud of this uh, project and extremely proud to be part of Egypt's transition into renewable energy. This project helps po less pollution, uh, it helps uh, employment, it helps moving uh, into more green and efficient uh, energy. Also, us at Orascom, we are not only the developer for this project, but also the contractor. So we are also training Egyptian workers to construct and operate a green plant with all the health safety practices that is well known. We believe uh, we are making it happen and we are very happy to be part of that. The Nwefi and Egypt's commitment to moving faster are already paving the way to mobilizing more finance. Nwefi is a great example. It's a country platform and it's a multi-partner approach. So through Nwefi we can invest in better grids, we invest in capacity building, in the upskilling of workers and local and green supply and value chains. This way we can unlock up to $10 billion of private finance and that's a 1 to 20 multiplier. It's a model for climate finance which can be replicated elsewhere. It's critical that the world's energy systems are transitioned away from fossil fuels, which means shifting to electricity use whenever and wherever possible. And that electricity must be generated from zero carbon sources, the wind and the sun. This goes beyond a moral obligation. It's also simply good business. Renewable energy is cheaper, safer, and more resilient to external shocks. The simple straight answer for who should pay for any negative externality is a tax on those who are emitting. But it is also a global public good for which many jurisdictions are suffering. And so what we need to do is a collective partnership that comes together to see how quickly and how fast and with speed we can uh, battle the crisis. We have a climate emergency and we need to channel the funding now at a speed and a scale that's unprecedented. So there's just no alternative. We have to do it. <laughs>